All right, been a while for um, provocation and other things, so I haven't really made updates like immediately after every single episode of Fairy Tale, which kind of is a bit of a letdown. But now I'm gonna do two of them at once. Not much happens, and well, if I have to be honest, well, I'm too lazy to redo <laughs> one fucking episode for every goddamn entry and again they're not that interesting I mean they're trying to make this uh, transaction between arcs and correct me if I were I mean is this is this like filler what we have right now with this Eldoras whatever the fuck copycat when they meet their counterparts and they're all like weird people they're actors, they're musicians, they're sweepers when it comes to Grey. I mean, well, that's a given. I mean, what the fuck is he supposed to do? And Julia's like topless dancer. I'm like, huh. Topless? What's that? It has to be a contradictor to her personality because she. She doesn't seem that prudish, I mean... Well, it has played off as a joke. Even though she totally lashes her tits to grey. I mean, hey, Lucy has done that before many, <laughs> many times, so... I mean, it's not that... She even did it in front of grey, so... Actually, she only, she mostly does it in front of Grey. <laughs> Not to just grabs it, like if it is like it, but flashing her, flashing her goods is what she does in front of Grey. So yeah. Well, it looks pretty normal to me. Because I got Wendy to heal me, jerk. I mean, listen. <laughs> Julia doing it is like old school. I mean, I can see why she <laughs> considers Lucy a rival, considering that she has her beat on Yugov interaction with Grey, so. Yeah, and also. She's oh. <laughs> alternative Naku or whatever the fuck that's what's called in this. Uh, New fairy nail guild is basically like abusive of Lucy. It's kind of like Joker and Harley Quinn or something like that, but a more tainted family version until they're actually doing stuff behind the scenes, like fucking or something. Lucy? <laughs> It's implied. Otherwise, we get a new type of Arza, a Onesama insecure, nerdy one. I mean, Arza is dorky and kind of weird on her own. But now we have like a insecure, more mature one and shy. Trying to bring some of those Hinata vibes into it. Oh, that really works. Anyhow, this video kind of tries to bring Juvia back into the team because I'm like, what the fuck? Isn't the main team supposed to be Urza, Lucy, Natsu, Grey, Juvia, and Wendy? I mean, at the start of episode, I mean, at the start of season three, that's basically what the team was. So I was like, so I was like, how come Juvia is not on the Hundred Years Quest? How she's not questing with Grey? It's like a missed opportunity in writing and scenarios and giving Grey something to do besides being mean to Natsu or stripping. I mean, sorry, say what? At least that's the way I feel. I know my sweet Natsu will come back to me, and once that moment arrives. When he's with Juvia, it's a 
better interaction, kind of like Natsu with Lucy, Nalu, and all that. Ursa is good on her own. She she finds her own place, and usually Wendy kind of spots her from time to time, which is great. If that was the best example, would be the fight against um, Irene. I mean, Jalal isn't exactly interesting in my opinion and I wouldn't want him to be part of the main team or of the guild <laughs> which kind of brings me to a, it's kind of weird I mean this Toka white mage has a strange cult of church stuff and they're all wearing white and like they're gonna get whitened like bleaked <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing here? Is, is, this, is this some sort of um, ancient temple where the high priestess gets calm all over her face? That's that's what happened with the Oracle of Delphi a few thousand years ago in ancient Greece. So I'm like, maybe it's the same here. <laughs> the same here. Sounds very um, occult, very... <gasps> What the fuck they're doing there? She's like controlling them to get the power of the tree. The trees, the tree beard. Right, one of the rings. Apparently, this dragon is like a huge tree, and there's a lot of cities living on him, which brings a moral dilemma about whatever sending his power is actually a good idea since hundreds of thousands of people will lose their homes and possibly their lives. So that wouldn't be making humanity a good favor, even though accomplishing the quest. I doubt fairy tale will keep this moral dilemma and have people truly suffer. They'll find a way to turn it on its head to say that the tree kind of abuses its power and the city can live on the ground as they are, and the power can be distributed without the presence of the dragon, they will find a way around it to make it look like our team is still the good people. They won't keep this grey witcher dilemma where everything goes to shit and there's no moral to the story. That's a review for another series and another videos and nobody cares about the witcher. Well, that's a con to your witcher. Oh valley of plenty, oh valley of plenty, oh, oh, oh. Anyhow, it's good that Juvia is back, and now finally they're gonna fight each other again. And from all the team that's posed there, the only threat is Luxus. I mean, Jalal is overrated, he's powerful and all, but you can fuck him up. If you have. Even Grey can fuck him up if he is really wants to and gets to that black thing superpower he has. The only problem is Luxus. Now Luxus can keep up even if Natsu goes into like full Ignea mode and flames and dark and Hulk rage. Well Luxus is brawly. Luxus also advances with his lightning and dragon magic and all that and he has access to all this kind of all this kind of secret arts of the fairy tale guild. If anyone can defeat Ultimate Natsu, it's Luxus. So Luxus is a big, big problem. It's a huge problem for the guild, or for our team. And I think Urza is gonna have to fight him. And again, Urza is Iron Man, and she would be able to put up a good, good, good fight. But Luxus is gonna tain us her ass and stab her in the belly. That was a nice scene. Also, Grey finally fights again against Big Slow, and this time he fights against the whole team. And I'm like, ooh, this is a reference to like the very first arc of Fairy Tale Battle, like in episode 30 something or 40 something from the first season, when Grey got fucked by Big Slow. <laughs> Because he was distracted by a child who was supposed to be part of his character development, 
but people forget about it and they didn't give a fuck. And now Juvia has no power and I hope she's not gonna distract him and get, get fucked again. I mean Gray is kinda like the only one who loses, also lost in the tournament against the musketeer guy. Well in the first season, in the second season he beat him up and took his uh, hat. But still, yeah. Anyhow, the black cat got brandished, smacked in the head while distracted or having some second thoughts about his abilities. That's what they do with brandish, they fight her up when she was sick or they brought Aquarius to make her like submissive. Anyhow, speaking of spirits, we finally see the cross dress combining Leo and Virgo. It's pretty awesome and I know it leads to the most epic fight that we're all gonna wait for, like, the most epic fan service fight ever since Mira Jane vs. Um, Jenny. It's gonna be Kyria vs. Lucy and they're gonna be like naked a few times, then the other one gets naked and the other one chops her clothes off and the other one gets her naked. It's gonna be a, an amazing back and forth. Can't wait to see it, it's gonna be like huge. Anyhow, I like how Virgo wants to be punished and Mira just like smacks her and she's like, ooh, I like that. <laughs> it's good shit, it's good stuff. I mean, can't wait to see her like. We see her cross form and it looks great, I mean. Let's see how good she can fight. 